Your Highness, Your Excellencies, uh, Honorable Chairman and CEO of DMCC, Ahmed bin Sulaim, our dear host, honorable guests of the conference, dear colleagues and friends. It's a great pleasure for me to have this opportunity to address the fourth Dubai Diamond Conference. We all work in the unique industry that makes it possible for our consumers to express and capture their real feelings and emotions, celebrate achievements in their life. At the same time, the unique nature of diamonds underlies the unique challenges we're facing today, living in the modern world that is changing and developing lightning fast. As it was noted by the organizers of this conference, the diamond industry has been challenged by disruptions. Global financial and economic instability, geopolitics, technological advancement, and of course, evolving perception of the new generation of consumers. I would like to touch upon some of those in more detail today. Firstly, the current situation on the market, and this factor was formed early last year due to overly optimistic expectations of retailers and manufacturers against the backdrop of strong seasonal demand in 2017. Unfortunately, the next holiday season saw diamond jewelry sales stagnating due to the plunge of the U.S. equities market in the fourth quarter last year and the breakout of the U.S.-China trade war, which is affecting Chinese jewelry manufacturing. The second factor relates to strengthening of banking regulation in India uh, with stricter requirements to obtain credit funding as a result of revealed cases, unfortunately, of some frauds in crediting. Today, the Indian banking sector goes through transformation, and this is an important step forward to bring more transparency and financial discipline to the market. But it will also lead to higher cost of funding and limit access to finance. The third factor is the structural change in the jewelry sales in the U.S., U.S. is, as you know, the largest diamond jewelry market, and the sales of polished diamonds haven't dropped, but we see that the retailer's approach to purchasing diamond jewelry has changed dramatically. Large retailers seek to minimize the stock through different mechanisms. Thanks to advanced IT systems, high-quality visualization of jewelry, retailers can offer consumers diamond jewelry that is physically located in other stores or hasn't even been purchased. Online diamond jewelry retailers generally avoid buying anything onto their balance unless they have a buyer. However, the sales of diamond jewelry remain stable and we expect that the situation will turn around and consider this crisis to be, though quite painful, but healthy as it will help to remedy the current imbalances and inefficiencies in the system. In the modern competitive luxury market, we also must think of reinventing the way we promote and advertise diamonds. Because of disruptions, traditional ways of marketing are not working well anymore. The long overdue relaunch of generic marketing to modern consumers by the DPA is an important step. But we all should contribute to it with our innovative ideas. Specific campaigns, regional campaigns, rethinking other four C's and other properties of diamonds like provenance, sustainability, and other main examples of how we can work to find new marketing approaches. Creation of innovative tracks of promotion is one of the ways to keep up with the tendencies and realities of the 21st century. LGDs are viewed by many as another disruptive factor for the global diamond industry. Though we believe that it will not affect our product in the long term and land in its, it, it will land in its own niche, it's crucially important to take actions aimed at clear differentiation between diamonds and their man-made analogs. This work has been in the focus of the DPA this year, with work being done together with our long-standing industry partners. 
Collaboration in this area is key to success. Failure to ensure differentiation undermines not only the diamond, but also the jewelry industry, leading to loss of business in many traditional jewelry centers of the world. A clear challenge also lies in ungrounded claims of natural diamonds not being ethical. So the DPA commissioned first ever report on the impact of the diamond mining on regional economies shows exactly the opposite. Not every mining industry can boast of a net positive socio-economic and environmental impact of actually 16 billion US dollars annually. We suggest that the promotion of the diamonds do good story should also be a joint diamond industry effort, not only limited to its mining community. We need united efforts to successfully implement industry initiatives on responsible business practices, protection of diamond equity, and consumer rights. Here, the reform of industry regulation and self-regulation systems is vital for our product to continue to appeal to a new age consumer. Success of the current review cycle of the Kimberley process, universal implementation of renewed system of warranties of the World Diamond Council, and promotion of updated code of practices of the Responsible Jewelry Council is not a nice to have, but a must to have issue. We must embrace this change together. Consumers want to know more about diamonds in their jewelry to be sure that they are of a non-conflict origin, responsibly sourced, and benefit the communities where they are mined. That human rights at every stage of the pipeline were duly respected and environment was protected. And this applies to all sectors of the diamond pipeline, not being merely a mining issue. Traceability programs are also very important to show consumers the whole journey of the diamond. For example, our in-house Alrosa uh, digital passports and digital certificates allow our customers to get 100% guarantee and assurance of the origin of the mine of the stone, where it was extracted and where it was polished. With this in mind, I assume that the next main disruption in the industry may occur because of the diamonds will no longer be, uh, if I may put it so, like faceless, unknown mass of stones, but a unique product with its own characteristics that were inherently attributed to it by nature. Previously, only exclusive special stones were considered to be unique, but now, it's in the mass segment as well, and you, you see it every day. Everybody wants to know the story, not just to buy just a single piece of, 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 of rough or polished diamond. And the diamond industry needs to adapt to this. Imagine, for example, Alrosa production report saying that we haven't just produced 39 million carats of diamonds, but we produced 25 million of different stones. To go back to the main theme of the conference, disruption that the diamond industry is facing is almost every aspect of the business in both a challenge and an opportunity for all of us. But no grasp this opportunity, the industry needs to embrace new realities and accept them, not try to walk away from them in hope that someone else will come and fix the problem. If you always do what you always did, you will always get what you always got. That's Albert Einstein's quote, and this clearly depicts the situation the diamond industry must avoid now more than ever before. I hope that this conference hosting so many distinguished experts will help us to better understand the challenges we face and outline possible solutions for the benefit of the entire diamond sector. I wish our conference a great success, and thank you very much.